It is time for your favorite Android podcast from the crew of BlindAndroidUsers.com. Kick back and enjoy another fine episode from these Google fanboys as they navigate Android from a blindness perspective. And now, here are your hosts. Hello and welcome to episode 32 of the Blind Android Users podcast. I'm Ed Green and with me this week are my fellow co-hosts Warren Carr, uh, Austin Pinto, Marion Mosen and a new co-host for you this week, Doug Cameron. We're recording this show on Saturday the 17th of July 2021. It's a busy show this week, as well as the usual announcements from Austin. Um, We have the next in our category of must-have apps, and this week it's audio book players. In our In Focus section, I'm delighted to say we're being joined by Dave Mielke, um, the developer of BRL TTY. We have the next in our series of commentary demonstrations, as usual, from Mariam. The app of the week this week comes to us from Kareem Kivan, and it's the very popular ACR phone dialer app. Then we have a tip of the week from Warren, which is all about using talkback granularity to better spell uh, words in text. And our Android journey this week comes from Rosalina Square. How are we all doing, folks? Excellent. Excellent, Ed. We're having a great time today. It looks like we, we're going to be baptizing dog. Um, Doug, <laughs> well, we're, well, we're very, very privileged to be joined by Doug Cameron, who is the former senator for New South Wales in Australia, retired very recently. So we've got a parliamentarian. Doug, how oh, are shit, you? Sweet. <laughs> and hey, we're on a promotion. You know, and you by the way, like relocated to entry. Canada. You know, we, we want to mention the fact that he relocated to Canada. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he, do, he doesn't sound like his Wikipedia entry. <laughs> <laughs> he really doesn't. <laughs> I think you have to put on an Australian accent for at least the next hour. Oh, fuck. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we need to correct Wikipedia. I'm going to go and change this Australian <laughs> senator's Wikipedia page to say you're some guy in. Where are you? Alberta? Or? Yeah, Alberta. Yeah, yeah. You Middle of Alberta. Them. Middle of absolutely nowhere. <laughs> well, that is Alberta, isn't it? Yeah, my much. wife's from my wife's from BC. So Well, you you also know one of my you also have a fairly good idea who my girlfriend is too, so you know. <laughs> so in, in other words, he's in the Canadian prairies, right? Is that like the prairie <laughs> uh, zone? <Yes. laughs> the Canadian equivalent of the desert. And, uh, you know, Dave, we have you also, a Canadian, except that you are way out there on the eastern part of the uh, Canadian coast, right, Dave? Hey, well, I'm I'm in Ottawa, which means I'm in the capital, but I'm a nobody, and he's not in the capital, but a senator. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how this one works, eh? <laughs> When when Warren said you're on the East Coast, I thought you were gonna tell us you were in the Rankin family or the once or something, but it's only off no, to us. No, not that not that no, far. I'm not, I'm not that close to the East Coast. <clears throat> ah. the, the East Coast <laughs> is probably about a day and a half drive from here. Well, I'll be. And uh, of course we got Miss Mosen, uh, Jonathan's uh, sister here. <laughs> you know. Oh no. It's not. Hey everyone. <laughs> This is more like his granddaughter, isn't she? I don't think she's that old. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think she's a grand granny. Um, uh, Austin, <laughs> what's up, man? Uh, hello, everyone. It's raining a lot here, and for the past two days, it's almost flooded in some areas. So I'm it's nice and cool. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah. Can you send some of the rain like my way? I'd be, I'd be like super pumped. We didn't get rain for a long time, so I think we're enjoying the, all the rain now. I haven't Excellent. seen a drop of rain in weeks. Yeah. Oh, so we? You mean we got more rain than you then? We yeah. had some last night. Yeah. Oh no! Gosh, I wish we did. Austin, what have you got announcements wise this week? This week in the announcement section, we have got two announcements for the show. It has been a long time that the listeners were not updated in our playback statistics. So we had 13,500 plays as of today, as of now. And the next episode and the next and the next announcement is that our website is being rebuilt and is coming along very nicely. 
all thanks to Doug. And if you want to build your own website, a WordPress website, you can visit his site. We'll have the notes in the we'll have the links in the show notes. Excellent. Thanks very much, Austin. Just before we move to our must-have apps category, uh, we have one final announcement relating to the release of Android 12 Beta 3. Warren, do you want to tell us about that? So in Android Beta 3, Android Beta 3, Android 12 Beta 3. What we have is the fact that we, some of the things have kind of gotten polished and uh, some things have been rearranged. And the thing that one thing that comes to mind, for example, even though minor as it is, uh, one may not even notice it, is the fact that in the, um, when you pull down the quick settings panel, it was, it used to be that in beta 2, you have power, then open settings and edit. Now you have settings, power, and edit. Now, the best way to do it is for me to just uh, turn on my phone. Uh, so I'm going to turn on my phone and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So here's. What I'm talking about, when I bring down my quick panel, at the bottom of that quick panel, you have those three buttons. It used to be Open settings button. right there at the right edge would have been the um, power, and then the middle going left, power menu button. where the power is, was where that open settings was. And then to the farthest left, Edit order of settings button. It's the edit order of settings. Now, another thing that I want to mention here is the fact that you can actually toggle off the ability to swipe up from the left or right corner of your phone to invoke the assistant if you don't want uh, to use that feature. And so I want to quickly demonstrate that. And so I go into my system settings. Page one of two, collapsed, open settings button. Settings, profile picture, double tap to open Google account button. And what I notice is that this, um, before I get to that, the quick tap for some reason, I can find it on my beta three. Hey, Austin, did you see the quick tap in yours? I can't find it anywhere. I was hoping. No, I didn't see the quick tab in mine. I think they've removed it. Yes, the quick tap seems like Google took that out because it wasn't working on every phone, on every Pixel phone for, for some reason. We had that embedded too. It was there, but it just wasn't working. And now I was looking for it to see if anything has changed, but it has altogether been removed. So if you're looking for the quick tap, and the quick tap, what we're talking about here is the ability to tap the back of your uh, phone to assign some uh, actions to it. And you could say, open this app or do such and such an action uh, that is no longer there. I thought it was just something odd going on at my end, but it's been removed. I looked at it elsewhere on all of my phones that are enrolled, and I can find it. Okay. So when you open settings, I'm trying to remember where you go to change that um, that uh, swiping with two fingers from the bottom. I think you go to system settings. Let's go here. So you go to system and then you go to gestures, I believe. Gestures. Gestures. Settings. Gestures out of list. Quick gestures. Heading. Pause music. Off. Skip songs. Off. Silence interruptions. Off. Hand active edge. On. Quickly open camera. Off. Flip camera for selfie. I think you go to the navigation so gestures. Let's... System navigation. Gesture navigation. There we go. Settings. When you go to these navigation gestures, what you're looking for is a button that says settings. So let's see here. I find the settings. Radio button, settings, button, gesture settings, navigate up, button, out of list. When you tap on that settings, right near the top, I believe, we'll find something that talks about the assistant. Digital assistant, heading, and list. Swipe to invoke assistant. Swipe up from the bottom corner to invoke digital assistant app. Switch on. So you can turn that off. Swipe up from the bottom corner to invoke digital assistant app. Off. 
So if you don't want to accidentally turn on the assistant, then you can just turn this off by doing what I just did. So you first go into system settings. Next, you go to system. Then you scroll and tap on gestures. Now scroll down and tap on navigation. And then once navigation opens, you want to tap on settings. And right there, you'll find the toggle to turn the assistant on or off. So in other words, if you don't want to swipe from the bottom right or bottom left and invoke the assistant, then you don't have to. You can just turn it off. So it's nice to see that Google brought that um, in this beta 3, and that's one of the important changes that we see in beta 3. There are, of course, a lot of them now, including the screenshots, uh, that one could have scrolling screenshots. So after you take a screenshot of a page, maybe there are several pages, panning pages, but typically it used to be that when you do a screenshot, it only captures the visible page. But now you have the ability to tap on more and then you should be able to capture every page. And so it's nice to see that come to Android, most especially now that we have Android <clears throat> Beta 3. So those are some of the important uh, changes. We still have more changes yet that are yet to come. And uh, I do want to mention here in passing, I hope it wasn't a fluke. But what I noticed was that after I updated to Android 12 Beta 3, I decided to do a factory reset. You know me about my factory resets and all of that. I always want to see if something changes. And of course, I was surprised, and I hope it just wasn't a fluke. But when it got to the setup screen, there was like a pulsating, like a heartbeat. Pep, 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 pep. You know, so if you're blind, it lets you know that you're now on the screen that is ready for you to activate your accessibility. And after I ac activated accessibility, then that beep, 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 beep uh, um, sound goes away. It's like it's like a little the pulsating thing. I, I can't even describe it, but it's like a heartbeat. And I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll do another reset to see if, that's, uh, if that happens again or it was just a one-time thing. But... I think even if it wasn't, maybe that should be something that should be implemented. So when you're setting up a phone by yourself and it comes to the screen where you need to hold down those two volume keys, you should know when you are on that uh, screen. So I think this would be a great thing if this is a feature of Android 12. This uh, vibration thing was even on my phone. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's, I think it's a new thing, and I am actually excited about it because it really makes sense. If you're blind, you want to know when you're ready to invoke your accessibility. Too many times people try to uh, activate ac accessibility a little prematurely, and therefore they say, oh, you cannot turn talk back on, and all, oftentimes than not, it's because of the fact that the thing wasn't on that screen that is ready for activation of this uh, accessibility. So I like that. But one of the one of the surprising thing, Google is adding features so late into the development cycle. That is a surprise because I think the next beta is the last beta we'll have. That is a surprising thing. Yeah, the last beta comes up in you know comes out in August, and of course, you know we probably will see more stuff in August. Who knows? And uh, that's going to be the last one before the public release, which probably will be either that month or later on in September. So, I'm excited about what I'm seeing. Um, if you are visually, you no, know, I mean if you have some sight, then you know some of the wallpaper changes and that material you is really coming into play. So if you have a little bit of sight, it's a place to go feast on, you know, play with the wallpaper settings and adaptive whatever colors, and it just becomes the chameleon that you want it to be. As someone who's playing with that feature, I freaking love it. <laughs> there you go, dog. <laughs> I hate staring at, like, white icons or, like, I don't like looking at anything white because it hurts my eyes. So I've been playing pretty heavy with like tweaking 
the material you and yeah, it's. I hope they continue adding color options for your highlight your highlight colors, but so far it's actually fairly solid. I think those with a little bit of sight are going to be enjoying this Android twelve because it's unlike anything we've ever had before. So I'm excited about the things that we have. And uh, those are the things that I observe uh, in Android 12. I mean, there are a plethora of other things there, you know, at a glance, um, basically how the weather looks and all of that. Like I said, some of these things are visual in nature, and but the world doesn't revolve about, you know, around us. So it's not all about us but about everybody else. So if something is not beneficial to me, at least it's beneficial to somebody. So I'm glad we have that. Excellent. Thanks, Warren. And uh, as Austin says, uh, maybe one more beta cycle to go before Android 12 uh, hits the streets, so to speak. Well, let's turn then to our uh, app category for this week, a must-have apps that we think uh, blind Android users should have. And this week, it's all about an audio books apps, uh, a category which I suspect needs no real introduction, uh, kind of does what it says on the tin, and many of our users I know will be uh, avid, avid readers. Warren, what's your uh, audio books app of choice? So technically, I'm not an audio type kind of guy. Uh, on a sleepless night, I put on an audio book, and boy, in five or so minutes, I'm gone. So Audiobooks to me are more or less like a lullaby, you know, <laughs> trying to put me to sleep. And so I actually don't use audiobooks or don't listen to audiobooks. Uh, however, I know there are a few ones out there that really work well. And I have, oh, maybe a couple or three on my device. I do not at the moment have any audiobook necessarily. Uh, there was one that I got from. Uh, the Play Store, uh, and by the way, you know, the Play Books, you know, Play Audiobooks too, but you have to get them from either the Play Store or you can upload them to the Play Store, uh, Play Books rather. And so we have that, but then I think the one that most people talk about, especially on our email list, will have to be the likes of the uh, Listen Audio Player, the Smart Audio Player, and there's a lesser known one that's called a platy. Or is it platy? Platy. I have a folder here. Saturday, July 17th folder. Audiobook players. Folder opened two by two. And by the way, you know what? I resurrected my old Pixel, first generation Pixel XL. So this is what you are hearing. I have on here. Platy. That's the platy. Um, and then I have. Artmobile. We're not going to talk about BARD, but BARD is there just in case you're in the U.S. and you want to get get books from the library. Simple app free. Listen audio book player. And audio book players, edit box. I, I'm not seeing my Listen, audio smart player. audio player. Storage permission is required to play audio books. Storage permission is required to play audio books. So when you bring up this um, Listen Audio Player. Okay. It asks you. Um, Allow listen audio book player to access photos, media, and files on your device. Allow button. Hush the running. Tap for more. Select the audio book library folder. Folders can be organized inside other folders. A folder that directly contains audio files will be scanned as a book. Okay, button. Okay. Files. Show roots. Button. And so basically, you know, it says show preparing roots. Three period, preparing three period. You can. You can actually just go choose where your books are located, and it also lets us know that you could also play a book from within the folder and things like that. Now, like I indicated, though, I'm not an audiobook user, but uh, this is one of those nicely organized uh, book players, audiobook players, and besides the smart audio player, uh, these are probably the two that I would say, hey, you know, if you're not into you know like the uh, Amazon Audible or you want to you want to be able to play any book audio book then these two the smart audio player and the listen audio player would be the ones that you want to get it places me now in my um, main storage and of course I would go and choose let's see if I have any book 
Allow access to downloads button out of print. You have to uh, allow it because it's kind of implementing the scope uh, storage system. Allow access, premium the file. Allow access to downloads button. Allow access to downloads and downloads. It will allow listen audio book player to have full access to all files currently stored under this location and any future content stored here. So that's a that's a neat implementation because you are able to now choose uh, which parts of your phone the app should have access to. If there are areas that it's a no no, then you don't al allow it access to those uh, portions or folders in your phone. And so I really like that. Cancel button. Allow button. And library folder is. And so what that means is that if I have audiobooks in my downloads, it can automatically grab those or I could point it to those and it will have no problem accessing those books because I've already allowed it access to it. Add library folders. So you could tap to add library folders is there on the top right. That would be it Resident though because I don't have any Next. books to uh, really one, demonstrate and I wish I would have downloaded a book or two. Now, another good free book player, audiobook player, would be LibriVox. And that, of course, plays, you know, classic books from uh, LibriVox. So you like classics, that would be probably um, a good player to have. And we also have that on the Play Store. So LibriVox is another free player. Uh, Miriam, you are trying to say something. Yeah, so um, what I was... I'm uh, trying to say, as far as I know, that in the smart audiobook player, there's a premium subscription. Is that the same thing with the listen audiobook player thing that you've just demonstrated? That's a good question. I think the listen audiobook player doesn't have subscription models. You could just simply pay for an in-app purchase. I don't remember how much I paid for mine, but it's been a while, so I, I really don't remember... We'll look it up on the uh, Play Store and we'll put that in the show notes if it does specify as to how much it is. But I believe it's an in-app purchase. And Warren, the first one you mentioned, Platy or Platy, how do you spell it? Now, Platy, let's see. Here's Platy. Folder, a folder, audio, page one to one, Platy, capital P, L, A, I, D, Y, Platy. Platy. <laughs> Platy, uh, okay. <laughs> Platy or Platy. Uh, I don't know. It's Platy. Uh, so basically, you're playing your book, but it's a Platy. Um, shall we open up Platy and see what Platy looks like? Let's, let's try that. Platy. Platy, hello, please add audiobooks to your library. Of course, it's telling me to add audiobooks because I don't have one. Select folders. And you can select folder. Find audiobooks. Find audiobooks. I wonder if that takes me to their website and grabs me books. Select folders. Find audiobook. Allow Platy to access photos, media, and files on your device. Allow oh, button. it's going to be searching in my folders. Platy, select audiobooks. A known author match app images, 6 of 20, and list 20 items. Ah, so that's what it's doing. So it's now in my main storage and it's seeing like my WhatsApp. This is my old phone that used to have WhatsApp on it. And frankly, I haven't pulled out my Pixel 1 uh, first gen Pixel in quite a spell. And, uh, add the library out of list. and I could choose to add those things to library and or not. So uh, that's Pixel that, that Platy. It's, it's, it doesn't have any ads, at least that I know of, unless, of course, I, p I paid for it, but I, I don't remember. So we'll put that in there just in case folks want to try uh, Platy. Excellent. Uh, Doug, are you an audiobooks man? Um, the only thing I use is Audible or uh, Overdrive, which connects when in with the libraries. Ah, oh, yes, so, Overdrive. Yeah, and we all know Overdrive has its issues with accessibility on occasion. So <laughs> Yeah, it used to be pretty good. I mean, I guess before there were many other options, but uh, I guess it doesn't look quite as good as it used to now. No, it's it, it's not bad, but it's definitely a little laggy. Yeah. Um, definitely re would definitely recommend um, Audible way over top of Overdrive, but in a pinch, Overdrive's great. Yeah, and and sometimes you're just driven by what your library are using, aren't you? Exactly. You have a choice. And, yeah. and I don't know too much, but I do know that Libby, I believe it is, is the new version of Overdrive. 
And last I actually did some research on it, it wasn't super accessible for Androids. Interesting. Yeah, yeah my library's just switched. I might have a look at that. Yeah, Libby is from Overdrive. So, you know, the parent is called Overdrive. And so Libby is that baby. Um, I do remember when I downloaded Libby, it told me to download Overdrive because it was more accessible. Like, that's what I, that, that's, that was another notification that I got from Libby. It was like, download the other one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but why not make it accessible from the get-go? You know what I mean? Come on, guys. Libby, exactly. if you're listening, fix that baby. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, even those on the the fruit side of things don't get accessible on Libby. So, mm. I mean, at least it's equally inaccessible on all uh, platforms. That's right. So much for caring about us. In other words, we don't necessarily care about you guys. Uh, you know, <laughs> how else can I put it, guys? <laughs> <laughs> you are the library, and one would think that. Uh, accessibility should be a priority for a place like a library that serves all kinds of people, you know. Um, but unfortunately, that isn't the case, and it's it's a shame. Let's let's call it, you know, call a spade a spade. This is a shame that Libby is not all that accessible. I haven't tried it. I know I tried it. Uh, oh, maybe maybe twenty seventeen. I installed it and it wasn't good. I got rid of it. Overdrive got abused by uh, various American librarians, as in uh, criticised and insulted. We're going back probably almost a decade, so things may have changed. But they would have naughty tie-ups with Amazon, where uh, Overdrive, Am Amazon would know that your Overdrive book almost needed returning, so it would invite you to buy the Kindle app. Uh, and there's a very amusing <laughs> audio blog. I hope it's still up because I didn't know librarians said naughty words, but this lady got incensed that, you know, because obviously what people read in the libraries is supposedly inviolable and all overdrive are sharing it on Amazon. So uh, it was very funny. Uh, I might see if it's still up. <laughs> so well, let's talk about the advantages of an audio book or disadvantages of an audio book. Guys, what do you think are the advantages of using an audio book? You're, you uh, are think... multitasking. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. <laughs> so I could be cooking, right? So I'm thinking about my belly here because I think my tummy comes first when I'm talking about stuff like this multitasking. I'm trying to find something to eat, right? <laughs> so... Exactly. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And or if you are driving, if you are a driver, and because it's not only the blind that use audio books. Actually, they're becoming popular uh, with everybody. But usually when people think about audio, they're thinking just about us, blind people. But that's no longer the, the truth, is it? Yeah. We all consume uh, audio. And, and I think relative advantages as well com compared to what, I guess, is the question. So physical books, absolutely multitasking. Compared to e-books, um, which I guess theoretically you could also listen to while cooking. For me... It, audiobooks can bring novelizations to life a little bit with professional actors. You can have adaptations, so you know, your audio dramas. But the, the, the disadvantage, I think, is, it, well, that's a double-edged sword in some respects, though, because I, I've had books where the narrator's absolutely ruined the book, and it would have been better off <laughs> just listening to text to speech. It's absolutely dire. And not just some of the voluntary organizations either that do them and obviously are working in constrained circumstances these are professionally recorded things with quite famous actors and i'm like you really shouldn't be doing this gig fella you know someone should not have hired you to do this and for me of course like i said you know it becomes a lullaby you know put me to yeah. bed, baby kind of thing you know <laughs> so controversial one of the worst audiobook narrators ever jim dale narrator of the american harry potter british uh, film star from oh, a very amusing yeah. series of films yes. carry on films uh, if you haven't watched them you should full of innuendo probably not allowed to be screened in public these days but uh he his accents just keep slipping and that's what i mean why a narrator can just ruin a book okay so those are the advantages some of some of the advantages and disadvantages of audiobook players uh, so shall we Call it good on audiobook players. And I just want to. I just want to make one comment about Audible. Um, this isn't a comparative podcast. Obviously, we don't do things like that. I will just say though that with the Android Audible app, you can buy books in the app. You do not have to pull up a web browser as you may have to in 
other platforms. So, something to bear um, in mind. So, <laughs> that's good. But before we move on, I just want to mention something else. Um, it's called Script. And it's actually kind of competitive to Audible when it comes to, like, audiobooks. Just because I think, like, payment is, like, $17 a month. And you could just get, have, like, as much books as you want. Because I know that in Audible... Um, you cannot. And by the way, script is pretty accessible. Um, and it's unlimited, I guess. Like, in Audible, you could get two originals a month, um, audiobooks. But in script, it's not. Um, there's another one. It's called Any Play. It's available on the Play Store. It's also unlimited, so you don't have, like, a certain number of books. If you read, like, 1,000 books a month, which is, you know, <laughs> kind of... Weird, but if you do, you won't have limited access to books. Like you just pay the, you know, the subscription, and you get as many books as you want, which is good. Yeah, that would be a lot of books, and of course, if you're reading a thousand books a month, then you absolutely probably don't have life, you know, outside of books. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll be lucky if I read two books a month. I don't think I even. Uh, <laughs> i kind of gotten lazier and lazier when it comes to reading my books. Uh, however, if it's a nice book, of course I'll read it. It just doesn't have to be fiction, that's all. I think if possible, we can demo Audible. I want that. Yeah, I'll do Audible quickly. We'll fire it up. Yeah. Device unlocked. 1737. Audible. Audible. Search. So you have four tabs in the Audible app. Oh, at the bottom the home tab will show you uh, the books you've currently been listening to we'll go into the library tab the home app isn't particular uh, tab isn't particularly interesting View all titles you have started listening to. Button. View all downloaded titles. Button. Downloaded. View all titles you have finished listening to. Button. 534 titles. So you have any number of options uh, there to filter your library view. Um, if you want to play or download a title, you double tap it and it will do whichever of the things that it needs to. So if it's on your device, it'll play it. Um, if it's not on your device, but in your library, it'll download it. The, the interesting thing about the Audible app, as far as I know, is that it doesn't support streaming in the app, although Audible does support streaming from its website. Obviously, you can go to the uh, website there. It's not critical, though, because um, if you download an app, uh, an Audible title on your phone, it will uh, sync across your devices. So you can download it, play it from the device, and as long as you've got a network connection, it'll sync so you can pick up on your Alexa, uh, your computer, etc. cetera. Um, so I'm going to show you how you buy a book. Uh, because obviously that's that's something as I mentioned you can do on Android. So we'll go to search. So there's a book I'm interested in a minute, a new thriller that's come out called Falling. Capital B. Falling edit box, clear query, but results 618. Sort by feature, zero filters of falling by TJ Newman, rating 4.0 stars, 58 reviews, falling, double tap to activate. That's the one. I'm going to open this up. Capital N, shop, falling audio book, TJ Newman, audible.co.uk, web view, navigation. Yeah, it's an annoying web view. They've put a web page inside an app, but we'll forgive them. Credits information, region, available credits, zero, next credit available, July 20th, 2021. Extra credits. Link. So as you know, Audible, you can you can buy extra credits. For We're gonna Double I'm gonna navigate by heading. I think the summary will be a heading in this. So I'm going to go back up because um, if I want to buy uh, the book, that's going to be above the uh, summary. So I'll go to the heading level one. Summary. Falling. Heading one. Five. 
TJ New narrated Stephen Weber blank eight hours and twenty six minutes on the bridge audio release date language publisher categories mystery thriller and suspense link yeah. comma thriller four point four point fifty eight ratings whisper sync for voice whisper sync for voice ready crap whisper sync for voice ready get this audio book for the reduced price of seven pounds and ninety nine pence when you buy the Kindle edition first learn more about whisper regular price twelve for one credit regular price twelve pounds and fifty nine pence for one credit. I know for 12 pounds and 59 pence. I don't have any credit, so I'm not going to buy it now. But the, um, as you'll see on the main page of the book, there is a buy now book. And it's as simple as that. Once you've done it, it will be in your library. You go back to the, well, we were on the library tab, I think. But um, you go uh, to your library. It'll be the top item once you've bought it. Uh, double tap it and download it. I will, I will just talk about WhisperSync. Uh, you may have heard that as I was navigating that page. WhisperSync as it said, allows you to buy an audio book at a discounted price if you've also bought the Kindle edition. Uh, I can't, I, I haven't used it. I don't immediately have a use case for it. But if you're out of credit, do fancy an audio book and happen to own the Kindle edition, then it might be something you want to have a look at. Great, Ed. That's a good uh, demonstration of the Audible uh, book player there, audio book player. And, you know, you guys could check it out and see if you like it. And, oh, my gosh, that story, I don't know. Uh, that's why I don't like fiction stuff. Just kidding. Ah, <laughs> I'm, trust me, I'm not sure whether it was fiction. If that was a non-fiction book, I'd be a little bit worried. <laughs> if it's got to be one or the other, I'll, I'll have it as fiction. <laughs> uh, oh. My gosh. After so trying to read that book, <laughs> it's hard to follow. Uh -huh. Is it? <laughs> yes. Ah. The, the flashbacks are not obvious that they're flashbacks, so it's hard <laughs> to tell what's a flashback and what's a meme. Read it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, interesting, because uh, for me, I'm not sitting here trying to read make-believe. Uh, maybe that's why I don't go to movies, as I should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too old. All right. Well, so. I'm sure they must have WordPress, the missing manual on WordPress, <laughs> uh, on Audible, if you'd rather read that. Yeah, I would rather read that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. That's they certainly the, had HTML, the missing manual once, I think. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's audio book apps. Next, I'm delighted to say that we are joined by uh, Dave Milke, uh, developer of BRLTTY. Warren, I might ask you to leave this item. Hey, Dave, we want to thank you so much for coming on. And it's the BRLTTY that we're talking about here. And this is an app that used to be something that one had to sideload. Uh, thanks to Dave. We now have that thing on the Play Store and we don't have to go look it up somewhere and, you know, digging and trying to find it and then sideload it. And hey, your phone saying you don't have permissions to install this. Now we can just install it straight from the Play Store. And that's what excites me about uh, BRLTTY. And Dave and I were talking, I think it was Wednesday, and I have a better understanding of the app now because prior to then, like many, I was making a mistake. I couldn't set it to read my contracted braille. It was showing things, you know, uncontracted in computer braille. And I wanted to have it, you know, contracted and try as I may, I could not. And someone told me, do space with uh, two, three, five, you know, drop F. And that worked. But then Dave took me through how it works. And it's a very beautiful um, braille reader with your phone. So if you want to be able to read things on your phone, on your braille display, uh, BRLTTY actually, I think, supports more devices than Brailleback does. And I do want to say that, you know, Brailleback actually has some of its drivers from BRLTTY. So, Dave, we want to welcome you officially to the Blind Android Users Podcast. And welcome, Dave. Hey, well, how are you? Welcome to my phone. Oh, of course. Now, Dave, how about you take us to the history? Because I am such a historian. I like the history, the background of things. And if you wouldn't mind, you know, give us a little bit of a history of the BRLTTY. You know, people would say, hey, what does BRLTTY stand for? And then the history, how it came about and where we are today. 
Okay, well, the name, the name is pretty simple. BRL means Braille, as people might guess. TTY is one of the things that show that it has a Linux ancestry. Uh, it didn't start with Mac or anything. It started on the Linux operating system. Uh, the Linux operating system has what you call virtual consoles. So you can, you know, it, it has, a, it can have up to 63, but most people configure it as, you know, up to maybe 12 because you can have them. The function keys is how you switch between them. And uh, they call those TTYs. So that's why the TTY is in there because it, it can read the screen of a given TTY. Unfortunately, deaf people use a device called TTYs and that causes some people a lot of confusion, but it's too late to change the name. Uh, how it started was uh, three dudes who were fed up with not having Braille on Linux and they wanted their own personal Braille devices to work. And so they got together and uh, wrote some software to communicate with their Braille devices and read the Linux screens. And uh, then they added a few more devices. And two of the guys were Canadian. They were both in the province of Quebec. One of them's name was uh, Nicolas Pitre, and the other one's name is Stéphane Doyon. And uh, another guy was a British guy. And uh, his name was Nick Heil something or other, I can't remember. Uh, and then around, that was, I think that started in 1995. Around the year 1999 or 2000 or so, I had a display that I didn't think was working well enough. So I started sending in a bunch of patches. And eventually they asked me if I wanted to just take over the whole thing, which I did. So I've been looking after it now since roughly July of the year 2000. Uh, and since then, we've added a whole ton of Braille devices. We've added the old original Braille devices were only serial. We have to add USB support, Bluetooth support. Uh, we the, the, the Braille tables used to be geared around any given country's, you know, ISO text table character set kind of thing. And now it's all Unicode based. Uh, it used to be Linux only. Now it runs on runs on Windows. I think even narrator, narrator kind of installs it. Uh, it runs on Android, as you know. Uh, it can run on Mac OS with a patch to it to a, an application called Screen. It's basically been the code is quite portable in it now, and it only needs a few platform dependent hooks to make it work on any new platform. So that's a rough history. Great, Dave. So it's a Canadian baby. And of course, there's always a mix of a British in there. Anytime you're talking Canadian, you cannot divorce it too, can we? You know? <laughs> well, so, so, some people want to. <laughs> <laughs> so very interesting history there, uh, Dave, because I didn't know that. And now we have a better understanding of the BRLTTY. And like you said, for many of us, we thought that the TTY part had something to do with the deaf, and you've just explained that it has nothing to do with that. But I was under the impression that the TTY in BRL TTY has something to do with the deaf, even though I didn't know how that was. But I was thinking that, hey, you know, maybe because they were doing this thing for the deaf, you know, you're deaf, blind, or whatever. You need Braille, and so that's what I thought that was. Well, it, 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 it's, con it's, conven it's convenient, but the problem is that the, the deaf TTY implies a communication over the phone, you know, like a fax machine or that kind of stuff. And that's right. This thing, has, this thing has nothing to do with communication over the phone. <laughs> it, it runs on your computer or your tablet or your and it just it monitors what's on the screen and puts that on your Braille display. And that's totally unrelated from what a deaf person's TTY does. That's right. Now let's go back, Dave, to uh, you know some of the functionalities of the BRL TTY. As you and I were talking that day, um, Wednesday, uh, if you guys are listening, when you have this thing installed, you actually could do some of those settings on the Braille display itself. And not everything is found within the app necessarily. For instance, you want to go into that preference and change 
to make it read, you know, contracted Braille, you know, instead of, you know, computer Braille. You could also do that space with the 2356, but when you go into the preferences itself, in other words, when it is running, you do space P on your Braille display, and that takes you to the preferences, and there you could fine-tune all that stuff. I didn't know about that until Dave told me about it. So if you haven't known that, that is how you go in and make some of those fine tunings and things like that. Now, Dave, could you tell us the reason behind the um, space with dot two three five as to uh, the commonly used space with letter G for most of the um, Braille units and uh, Braille apps that toggle between contracted or computer Braille or whatever uh, Braille code by using space G as to yours using space drop F? Yeah, the, the main reason for that is because <clears throat> it started on Linux and uh, none of us were Windows users and none of us had much of a background as to what the conventional Windows screen reader, you know, key bindings were. So we just kind of, you know, went our own way because we didn't know. And, you know, we like to be compatible where we can. And uh, if I'm going to go investigate this space with G because we aren't using space with G yet. So if we can make it do something that's expected, I'll probably, I'll be adding that in. Uh, so this is new to me. And uh, let's say we try to make things easy for users. So as we learn stuff, if we can, we'll accommodate it. Um, so the, what, what the way BRLTTY does it is if you think of computer Braille as eight dot Braille, and if you think of contracted Braille as six dot Braille, then you do a space with an MF six, like dots two, three, five, that takes you to a six dot contracted Braille. And if you do a space with an MF eight dots two, three, six, that takes you to eight dot computer braille. So that's how you can remember that. But I'll have a look at the space G and see if we can add that in too. Really interesting. I like that concept. Well, thank you so much. Now, Dave, it's now on the Play Store. Can we tell our listeners, is this a paid app or is it a free app? And or do you anticipate, you know, making it a paid app at some point? Uh, the, the, the answer the answer is very simple. Everything about BRL TTY is free, and it will remain free as long as the plane doesn't crash in that boat. <laughs> 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 so we better not get on that flight from, is it from the UK <laughs> to New York. No, as, as, as long as I have in my hand, <laughs> as long as my hand is in it, it will remain free. Well, thank you so much about, uh, for that, Dave, because it is important uh, because sometimes you have an app and it starts out free and then it changes. And so it kind of uh, throws uh, users into a little bit of a tizzy there. But um, we are appreciative of the fact that VRLTTY is free and it doesn't hurt to have two. I have both running on my um, phone and I switch between Braille Back and BRLTTY. And what I like about BRLTTY is that it doesn't crash nearly as Braille Back does. And so I have a more stable use with the BRLTTY. The reason why I wasn't using it much was because I was kind of not adept with how to go about changing things. And uh, But now I understand it, and I actually would be recording a little bit of a process on a tutorial of a tutorial about how to go about this BRLTTY. So if you're looking for that on our YouTube channel, if you want to get yourself involved in how to use uh, BRLTTY, learn how to use it, then I'll be recording that little demo there so that it will give you a better understanding yeah, and, of how it works. And another little hint, um, if you do a space with H, that's H like help, then you'll get a help screen. It's a it's again it's a braille only screen. It doesn't show up on on your device's screen, but it's it tells you all the different bindings and what you can do. 
And as an even as an added extra, if you do space with L, that puts you into what's called learn mode, and then you can just press keys, and it'll tell you what they're going to do. That's very interesting and something to keep in mind. Of course, you always want to do that help if you're getting stuck. Um, just do that space with that letter, and it'll take you to the help and learn about how to use it. The same thing, though, you know, when we talk about Braille bag, you know, we have the space with L, that's the help. So, but then it makes sense that space with L is a learning mode. So you learn how to use it. So whatever you're doing in that mode, it's not going to affect anything. So it's a very good way to get started. Uh, utilize that space L and learn how to use VRLTTY. And of course, when you're in learn mode, there's something very important you have to know, which is how to get out of it. <laughs> uh, the way, the way you, know. you, you, can, you can do another space L to get out of it, or if you don't do anything after 10 seconds, it'll time out and automatically go out of it. So you'll never get stuck in it. That's a toggle then. Yeah, and yeah, so it's a toggle. toggle. And, 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 yeah. And, and so is the space H, although space plus H doesn't time out. You're staying on the help screen, and if you do another space H, it'll take you out of it. Ah, that's a good hint because you don't want to be stuck in the help mode. I want to be able to use my device <laughs> after I've learned what to do. I need to get out of that, right? So remember, once well, you if, if, that... you, if you've been really reading the help text, it'll say on on eight on space with H, it'll say enter slash leave help mode. Uh huh. That's so really if good. you're paying if you're paying attention, you'll learn it. <laughs> <laughs> so the key word here is pay attention. And just going back to something you said earlier, Warren, I think it definitely doesn't hurt to have two options when one of them's braille back. Dear me. Um, much prefer BRL TTY. J just a quick question, if I could, Dave. You, one of you can the... ask me anything you want. Excellent. <laughs> uh, one, one, one of the limitations of Braille back uh, mm. in something like Kindle is that you can't pan beyond the end of a page most mm. of the time without first touching your screen, which is annoying, obviously. Does, Bra does BRL TTY support page uh, turning? Uh, the, the answer is uh, ha right now halfway, but one of the items on my list of things to get to is to make it work fully. The reason it doesn't work fully is because from its original incantation on like Linux and its stuff, it there was no need for that. And uh, now on, on Android, there clearly is. So that, that's on my list of things to add. Uh, however, in the meantime, the way BRLTTY works is that when you're on something on a screen, if you push, well, no, actually, if you're reading, if if you're on a page, I'm, I, I haven't used the Kindle app or anything, so I'm not quite sure how they show up. But in general, if you're on a screen and you're not in something that is text, if you're in something that is text, the rooting keys work like rooting keys because that's what you need them to do. I mean, editable text. I'm just in these books are not editable text. No, they're not. They're read only. Yeah, as long as you're not in editable text, the rooting keys do special things. Uh, rooting key four does a scroll back operation and rooting key five does a scroll forward operation. Interesting. I'll see yeah. that in a world then. In case you're wondering about rooting keys one, two, and three, you might as well. Um, the URL TTY follows things like TalkBot. It uses an Android feature called accessibility focus to decide where the cursor is. So unlike something like TalkBack, where you have to keep switching which is the focused item, the RLTTY actually presents to you the whole screen, and you can navigate around the whole screen. And when you decide that you want the current thing you're looking at to become the focused item, you press rooting key number one, and you'll find that the cursor just jumps to you there. Um, rooting keys two and three are for doing short clicks, where you can think of them as taps and holds. Excellent. Thank you for that. And and um, uh, and and how far do the routing keys functionality go? Do they do they extend all the way along the display, or will the later ones stop doing things eventually? Uh, well, each when you're when you're in a non 
Again, there's a difference if yeah. you're on, your, on a non-text or a non-editable text or some other item like a button. Each, you know, each of the first routing keys does something very specific. So, and that it only goes. There's only functions so far up to routing key seven. Routing key okay. six brings up the routing key six brings up the context-dependent menu, and routing key seven brings up the accessibility actions attached to the current item. If you're on a text item, then of course the routing keys are like routing keys. But yes. if you press a routing key way off to the right, because you have no idea where the text is ending, it'll bring you to the last character that's actually existing. Excellent. Right. So in other words, if you have to, it's, let's say a 13 character line, but you can't tell it to you, it looks like, you know, 13 characters and then a whole bunch of blanks. If you press the rightmost routing key, the course no, it'll actually go to routing to character number fourteen, which is the like end of line spot. Now, the th the thing that I'm kind of liking, though, if Dave, you work on this thing and makes it possible to um, pan pages, I th I think that will be a big game changer for. Uh, Braille readers on Android, because one of the complaints that we have about Braille on Android is the fact that most devices cannot uh, independently pan pages past the current page that one is reading. And so that has been one of the main uh, sticking points when it comes to Android and Braille. And if this happens, I think this would be really huge. Well, well, well re re remember though, you can do it now by pressing routing key number five. That'll that'll scroll forward. So you can do it. It's just not totally convenient. Uh, uh -huh. The reason there's a little extra work to make it work. And I do intend to do it. Um, the reason is because Mural TTY just thinks it's navigating a single screen. So I have to add a little hook in so that when it's moving down the line or up the line, it has to communicate with the Android framework to see if it's within inside a scrollable widget and to move it if it is. So that, that, that kind of a hook like that has to be added to, to make the automatic scrolling work. But I think it should. I think it's a good feature, so I'm going to do it. But you can, you can still do it now by going forward with scrolling forward with rooting key five and backward with rooting key four. Uh-huh. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I just brought my phone up and this is a very important subject matter that I think is of great importance to a lot of our listeners, most especially uh, Braille users, where this has been handicapped in the past, or they have been handicapped by the inability to pen these pages. But if one could do space with that five, you know, to um, kind of pen the pages until Dev uh, fixes it, I think that is still a very oh. good use. Okay, hang on. I, I, I don't mean space with dot five. I mean rooting key number five. Or rooting key number five. So, in other words, like, so I'm using my I'm using my braille display as an example. I have the Hims U two. So, would that be, um, like my fifth uh, routing key? So I go one, two, three, four, five. Is that what that's, we're talking that, about? That, yes, that's what I mean. Well, so that that makes sense. So, in the absence of uh, being able to pan it with the cursor keys or the whatever panning keys, if I could do that, I think that is still very good. So I'm going to be trying that. I will be trying that. I, I thought I have uh, the BRLTTY on this phone, but I, I don't. I have it on my other phone. So I will be playing with that today for sure. Yeah, and if, if there's if there's features people want, I don't I don't claim I know everything. I, I don't do a lot of book reading myself either. I, mean, I read a lot of technical books, but that's a different subject. <laughs> um, but if you if uh, if anybody has if there's any missing features, uh, I'll I'll be glad to add them. You know, it may may take you know a little while to get them added because you know if I'm doing this, it takes a while to get through everything. Can't do everything in one day. But I'll certainly look at adding them. For example, there are some apps. Pure Writer is an example. There's an app called Pure Writer, and it used to create a separate window for something or other. Like in, the, in other words, a totally separate area of the screen that wasn't part of the regular area of the screen. 
And it was important to be able to get to it. And the only way to get to it was for people to tap the screen on that window and sort of hold their finger there while they were using it in Braille. And that was horrible. Um, Braille TTY now supports navigating among the among the screen windows. So it's, you know, people just have to let me know there's something they need to do. Now, Dave, could I ask you to anticipate making it a paid app at some point? Uh, the, because- the, the answer the answer is very simple. Everything about BRL TTY is free. And it will remain free as long as the plane doesn't crash in that book. <laughs> <laughs> so we better not get on that flight from, is it from the UK to New York. No, as, 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 as long as I have in my hand, <laughs> as long as my hand is in it, it will remain free. Well, thank you so much uh, for that, Dave, because it is important uh, because sometimes you have an app and it starts out free and then it changes. And so it kind of throws uh, users into a little bit of a tizzy there. But um, we are appreciative of the fact that VRLTTY is free and it doesn't hurt to have two. I have both running on my um, phone and I switch between Braille Back and BRL TTY. And what I like about BRL TTY is that it doesn't crash nearly as Braille Back does. And so I have a more stable use with the BRL TTY. The reason why I wasn't using it much was because I was kind of not adept with how to go about changing things. And uh, But now I understand it, and I actually would be recording a little bit of a process on a tutorial of a tutorial about how to go about this BRLTTY. So if you're looking for that on our YouTube channel, if you want to get yourself involved in how to use uh, BRLTTY, learn how to use it, then I'll be recording that little demo there so that it will give you a better understanding yeah, and, of how it works. And another little hint, um, if you do a space with H, that's H like help, then you'll get a help screen. It's a it's again it's a braille only screen. It doesn't show up on on your device's screen, but it's it l- tells you all the different bindings and what you can do. And as an even as an added extra, if you do space with L, that puts you into what's called learn mode, and then you can just press keys and it'll tell you what they're going to do. That's very interesting and something to keep in mind. Of course, you always want to do that help if you're getting stuck. Um, just do that space with that letter and it'll take you to the help and learn about how to use it. The same thing, though, you know, when we talk about Braille bag, you know, we have the space with L, that's the help. So, but then it makes sense that space with L is a learning mode. So you learn how to use it. So whatever you're doing in that mode, it's not going to affect anything. So it's a very good way to get started. Uh, utilize that space L and learn how to use VRL TTY. And of course, when you're in learn mode, there's something very important you have to know, which is how to get out of it. <laughs> uh, the way, That's always the way good you- to know. You, you, can, you can do another space L to get out of it, or if you don't do anything after 10 seconds, it'll time out and automatically go out of it. So you'll never get stuck in it. That's a toggle then. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah so it's, it's a toggle. toggle. And, 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 yeah. And, and so is the space H, although space plus H doesn't time out. You're staying on the help screen, and if you do another space H, it'll take you out of it. Ah, that's a good hint, because you don't want to be stuck in the help mode. I want to be able to use my device. (laughs) After I've learned what to do, I need to get out of that, right? So remember, once you... Well, if you've been really reading the help text, it'll say on 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 space with H, it'll say enter slash leave help mode. Uh Uh-huh. That's really good. So if you're paying attention, you'll learn it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so the key word here is pay attention. And just going back to something you said earlier, Warren, I think it definitely doesn't hurt to have two options when one of them's Braille back. Dear me. Um, much prefer BRL or TTY. Just a quick question, if I could, Dave. You, one of you can the... ask me anything you want. 
Excellent. <laughs> uh, well, one, one of the limitations of Braille back uh, in something like Kindle is that you can't pan beyond the end of a page most of the time without first touching your screen, which is annoying, obviously. Does, Bra- does BRLTTY support page uh, turning? Uh, the, the answer is uh, ha- right now halfway, but one of the items on my list of things to get to is to make it work fully. The reason it doesn't work fully is because from its original incantation on like Linux and its stuff, it there was no need for that, and uh, now on on Android there clearly is. So that that's on my list of things to add. Uh, however, in the meantime, the way BRLTTY works is that when you're on something on a screen, if you push, well, no, actually, if you're reading, if if you're on a page, I'm, I, I haven't used the Kindle app or anything, so I'm not quite sure how they show up. But in general, if you're on a screen and you're not in something that is text, if you're in something that is text, the rooting keys work like rooting keys because that's what you need them to do. I mean, editable text. I'm using these books are not editable text. No, they're not. They're read only. Yeah, as long as you're not in editable text, the rooting keys do special things. Uh, rooting key four does a scroll back operation and rooting key five does a scroll forward operation. Interesting. I've seen that in a world then. In case you're wondering about rooting keys one, two, and three, you might as well. Um, the URLTTY follows things like TalkBot. It uses an Android feature called accessibility focus to decide where the cursor is. So unlike something like TalkBack, where you have to keep switching which is the focused item, the RLTTY actually presents to you the whole screen, and you can navigate around the whole screen. And when you decide that you want the current thing you're looking at to become the focused item, you press rooting key number one, and you'll find that the cursor just jumps to you there. Um, rooting keys two and three are for doing short clicks, where you can think of them as taps and holds. Excellent. Thank you for that. And and, um, uh, and and how far do the routing keys functionality go? Do they do they extend all the way along the display, or will the later ones stop doing things eventually? Uh, well, each when you're when you're in a non again, there's a different yeah. if, when you're in your, on a non text or a non editable text or some other item like a button. Each you know each of the first routing keys does something very specific. So, and it, it only goes, there's only functions so far up to rooting key seven. Rooting key oh, six okay. brings up, the rooting key six brings up the context dependent menu, and rooting key seven brings up the accessibility actions attached to the current item. If you're on a text item, then of course the rooting keys are like rooting keys, but yeah. if you press a rooting key way off to the right, because you have no idea where the text is ending, it'll bring you to the last character that's actually existing. Excellent. Right. So in other words, if you have to, let's say a 13 character line, but you can't tell it to you, it looks like, you know, 13 characters and then a whole bunch of blanks. If you press the rightmost rooting key, the course, no, it'll actually go to rooting to character number 14, which is the like end of line spot. Now, the, th- the thing that I'm kind of liking, though, if Dave, you work on this thing and makes it possible to, um, pan pages, I, th- I think that will be a big game changer for uh, Braille readers on Android because one of the complaints that we have about Braille on Android is the fact that most devices cannot uh, independently pan pages past the current page that one is reading. And so that has been one of the main uh, sticking points when it comes to Android and Braille. And if this happens, I think this would be really huge. Well, well, well re- re- remember though, you can do it now by pressing rooting key number five. That'll that'll scroll forward. So you can do it. It's just not totally convenient. Uh, uh-huh. The reason there's a little extra work to make it work. And I do intend to do it. Um, the reason is because Mural TTY just thinks it's navigating a single screen. So I have to add a little hook in so that when it's moving down the line or up the line, it has to communicate with the Android framework to see if it's within side a scrollable widget and to move it if it is. 
So that, that that kind of a hook like that has to be added to to make the automatic scrolling work. But I think it should. I think it's a good feature, so I'm going to do it. But you can you can still do it now by going forward with scrolling forward with rooting key five and backward with rooting key four. Uh huh. Okay. So I uh, you know I I just brought my phone up and this is a very important subject matter that I think is of great importance to a lot of our listeners, most especially uh, Braille users, where this has been handicapped in the past, or they have been handicapped by the inability to pen these pages. But if one could do space with dot five, you know, to um, kind of pen the pages until Dave uh, fixes it, I think that is still a very oh. good use. Okay, hang on. I, I, I don't mean space with dot five. I mean rooting key number five. Or rooting key number five. So, in other words, like, so I'm using my, I'm using my braille display as an example. I have the Hims U two. So, would that be, um, like my fifth uh, routing key? So I go one, two, three, four, five. Is that what that's, we're talking that, about? That, yes, that's what I mean. Well, so that that makes sense. So, in the absence of uh, being able to pan it with the cursor keys or the whatever panning keys, if I could do that, I think that is still very good. So I'm going to be trying that. I will be trying that. I, I thought I have uh, the BRLTTY on this phone, but I, I don't. I have it on my other phone. So I will be playing with that today for sure. Yeah, and if, if there's if there's features people want, I don't I don't claim I know everything. I, I don't do a lot of book reading myself either. I mean, I read a lot of technical books, but that's a different subject. <laughs> um, but if you if uh, if anybody has if there's any missing features, uh, I'll I'll be glad to add them. You know, it may may take you know a little while to get them added because you know if I'm doing this, it takes a while to get through everything. Can't do everything in one day. But I'll certainly look at adding them. For example, there are some apps. Pure Writer is an example. There's an app called Pure Writer, and it used to create a separate window for something or other. Like, in other words, a totally separate area of the screen that wasn't part of the regular area of the screen. And it was important to be able to get to it. And the only way to get to it was for people to tap their screen on that window and sort of hold their finger there while they were using it in Braille. And that was horrible. Um, BRLTTY now supports navigating among the, among the screen windows. So, you know, people just have to let me know there's something they need to do. Now, Dave, could I ask you this, if you would be willing to, uh, would you tell our listeners whether you yourself, whether you're blind or not, I, I am a hundred percent blind. I can't see anything. And have you always been blind, or is something that happened uh, later no, on in life? It, it, no, it's it's they, they determine when, when I was born. They didn't know anything because they know a lot more. Well, they knew a lot of stuff, but they know a lot more now. Um, when I was born, I could see fine, apparently. Um, by the time I was about ten months old, my mother started noticing me looking sideways at stuff. And then it got worse and worse and worse until I was about two and a half, and I suddenly couldn't see at all. And apparently, I spent the first day crying my head off. <laughs> I would be crying my head off too. So it's been, you know, like... I don't, re I don't remember that though. But she tells me that's what I did. So I, I believe it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to tell you that what the, the problem. I'm going to tell you the name of what they've decided that I got, and I'm going to give you five points if you can pronounce it. Oh my. <laughs> Okay. Familial exudative vitreal retinopathy. There you go. What? No, I, I couldn't even if I tried. <laughs> they, they call it. They, you can you can you can Google it under F E V R. F E V R. Okay. So like fever, you know. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Well, except there's no second E, but. 
Anyway, the F is familial, the E is exudative, the V is vitreo, and the R is resonant. I think one needs to be able to speak German to be able to say that. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, I mean, that, that's a language where they just, you know, compound words, there's no space. <laughs> it, it's actually is true. Exudative, vitreo, right of? Is that correct? <laughs> familial, exudative, vitriol, retinopathy. Oh my well, gosh. Not, hey, not, not, not vitriol. That's different. Vitriol. No, we don't vitriol. want a vitriol. That would be kind of being vindictive. <laughs> Having like vindictive, yeah. <laughs> this is me. I'd never been, I'd never dream of being vindictive, by the way. Anyway. <laughs> well, oh, you, you can dream about it, just don't be it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I might have I'm, sold I'm, the pass on that a long time ago. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm 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 a Bible person, and for what it's worth, the thought is as bad as the action. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, uh, First Ed, half of the Bible is a bit better though for that. I can it? see Ed though, getting vindictive after having a beer or two. <laughs> oh, I don't need a beer. Trust me. <laughs> Beers are enabling, but they're not essential. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you so much, Dave. And, I, I, personally, uh, I personally find being sober enabling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave, how about you give people your web page address? You know, people want to read more um, on the project and things like that. Where do they go to? Okay, well, there's a difference between my web page and BRLTTY's web page. BRLTTY's okay. web page is BRLTTY.pp. Uh, could you say that again? Because you faded out. It's a brltty dot app, as an app app. Okay. And uh, you know, mine is milka dot cc, but it doesn't have anything to do with. It has some of my controversial opinions on stuff. <laughs> well, if one wants to learn about some controversies and things like that, they could go to your page as well, right? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> and they can they can. And you, anybody can email anybody can email me at Dave at Mielka dot cc. So that's Dave D A V E and the uh, at and then Mielka, my last name M I E L K E, and then dot cc as in cat cat. Anybody can email me, and you know if you need want a new feature on Android, email me, tell me. So I gotta ask you a question: Are you a, um, an Android user, right? I am absolutely an Android user. So, do you use Talkback or CSR? <laughs> I, I, use, I, I use Talkback. Thank, Thank you, you, Dave. <laughs> I know where that girl was going. She was hoping that you are using the other screen reader so she can rub it in on me. <laughs> well, I, 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 I actually hadn't even heard of it, so I don't know. Oh, okay. I've heard. I've heard of another one called. Its name is escaping me now. Come to on something. Yeah, the commentary screen reader. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, okay, okay. Then I have heard of it. I just I didn't know it by the letters. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I've heard I've heard good things said about it, but I've never felt the yeah, need to good. try it's to fantastic. use it. Thank well, you. Maybe, you, you. Maybe you. just for fun, I'll stick it on and give it a try. <laughs> yeah, why not? Do it. I mean, talk about still better, but do it. No way. <laughs> My new enemy right now. <laughs> five five bucks isn't a whore, you know. People people are willing to spend, you know, a whole bunch of money at the pub for a beer that it lasts only an evening. You know, five bucks for a decent app is nothing. Uh, now I'm I'm saying that I'm still saying BRLTQI will remain free. I come from the open source community, and I have thoughts on app that apps should ought to, but I don't mind people who think they should be reimbursed for their work being reimbursed a little. I think that's fair. Yeah, absolutely. You know, buy them a coffee or something. If they want five bucks for a really good app, I mean, I would say, why not? Yeah. I think it's very selfish to say that somebody's really hard work should be always free. Uh, I'm saying that our work will remain free, but I, I still recognize that, that some people that. They, they need a little bit of income, you know, otherwise they'll starve and they won't be able to work on the app. And that's true. And that's why we have some that they have, you know, annual subscriptions or monthly subscriptions or one-time payment. And uh, so all in an attempt to make sure that the app is kept going and uh, giving that person the incentive to keep working on that. Because if we don't, then the developer may kind of abandon it a little bit or not give it priority. So it's a good thing. 
to be able to give someone a little bit of an incentive. Yeah, I mean, if, if people, you know, people tip in a restaurant for a good meal, right? That's right. So why not, as it were, tip the app implementer? <laughs> if they write a good app, it doesn't hurt to tip them. And, and the tip may be a $5 purchase fee. You know, some restaurants have gratuity fee, you know, taxes, and you pay those. And that's why we have, you know, some apps will have a donate. So one would choose to donate to an app developer. And that's another good way of making it um, possible for someone to get a little something from their hard work. So thank you so much, Dave. That's been very informative and B-R-L-T-T-Y it is. Thank you. Now we have the next in our series of commentary demonstrations from Mariam. Commentary screen reader, or the Chinese screen reader, has gotten really popular among blinds and visually impaired recently. And here, on the Blind Android Users Podcast, we will have a series of episodes in which we will talk about how to use the screen reader and how to get the best out of it. everyone and welcome to the next episode of CSR's Basics. Um, today's episode is kind of like a lighter one but it's mostly um, a pun of like a question from one of uh, our followers. Um, Mr. Damal, he actually asked me about something that's really interesting um, which was how can we like autoplay messages in, in WhatsApp? Because I know that this is a feature and it's one of the things that were like really annoying with Talkback and with CSR because it doesn't work. So I was like, since that day, like it's been pretty much a month ago. And since that day, I've been looking up things and like searching um, how we could do that because there's been like I think an, a demonstration but it was um, in another language which I definitely don't understand but um, I didn't know how to do it so today we've been looking at the voice assistant just because it's a part of it but first thing I want to say that um, to do the thing with WhatsApp there are um, you know two options or two things that you could do first one is in the premium subscription and the other one, it's actually in the free one, and it's related to the voice assistant. So the first one is like it's in the premium subscription is what you can do is simply um, assign a per app gesture through CSR and tell them that you want it in WhatsApp only and assign a certain gesture for it. And what you can do is um, go to function insert it and then go to assign suspend browse by touch and then function another one which is click so we're gonna do the same thing with the voice assistant but it's kind of um different so let's go and have a look at the voice assistant and how it works 7 pm um i hope my speech rate is good explore so First thing, we want to set the voice assistant up. So how we could do that is open the program settings. Menu, extension, voice assistant, read the whole screen, um, voice assistant. You can set it up from here, but I prefer the program settings. Ex program settings, G show plus, G, T -T action settings. Um, you go to advanced settings. Content present, notifications, advanced, advanced settings. Advanced set net advanced voice assistant settings. This is the first item on the screen. Voice assistant setting navig voice assistant speech recognition language. So what I want to point out is the voice assistant does everything regarding the um, screen reader. So you could just tell it to suspend um, voice feedback. You could tell it to. Um, you know, log the screen. You could tell it to even open an app. It's pretty much like the Google Assistant, but with additional stuff. Also, 
Um, you can assign some voice commands in your language. Like, for instance, if you want to say, like, stop, but in your language, you could just assign, assign a command with a certain gesture. And once you um, say this command, it's going to actually do it. So let's look at the things that we have here. Speech recognition language. Speech recognition language. And be aware that it's in Chinese. Like, first thing when I installed the app, um, even though it's the international one, it was in Chinese, and when I was trying to actually test it, it didn't work, and I found out that it was in Chinese, so it didn't recognize the language that I was saying it. So here, speech recognition language, Sp Chinese simplified unchecked. There's Chinese simplified, speech rec Chinese traditional unchecked, Chinese traditional, English checked, and English. Can English. Voice so there are just three languages here, unfortunately. System speech recognition engine. Um, speech rec voice. System speech recognition. System engine. speech recognition engine. Um, System default checked. Here it's better to leave it at default. It won't be a problem unless you're um you're using another language. Voice voice command settings. Um, voice command settings. Let's go here. Pass, pass, create button. So. Before we actually move on to this, this is how to create um, a custom voice command. Um, let's look at the other stuff before. Voice command. Voice assistant capability settings. Voice allow switching gesture themes with the voice assistant checkbox. Check this function is only available for premium users. So as you can hear, it's a premium um functionality but we, what you can do with it you can just switch between the default custom map or you can switch like um, another theme that someone has created or you either has created yourself allow switching gesture themes with the voice assistant checkbox check this function is on allow using a voice commands checkbox checked um here you have to turn that it's actually by default turned on so you don't need to turn it on but if that box is unchecked the voice commands won't work Use additional voice commands in the voice assistant checkbox. Check this function is only available for premium users. So it's by default checked, so it works if you want to assign additional voice commands. Um, but you can't switch that off <laughs> unless you're a premium um, user. Use extensions in voice assistant checkbox checked. Um, you can use the extensions as well. And yeah, that's it. So let's um, look at the other voice stuff. Assistant. Search engines, target language, source language. This is for the translation, since you could actually tell CSR to translate things for you. Um, you have the target language and the source language. You could set it to any language you want, pretty much. Target language, search engines. Search engines. Here you have Bing, Google, and uh, you know Baidu. Um, like every single search engine that works. Um, you know, if you want to look something up. Use voice input when long pressing on text box checkbox unchecked. This function is only available for premium users. Um, this one works if you only have the premium subscription. Um, if you want to turn the voice dedication on through the um, uh, voice dictation, sorry. <laughs> if you want to turn it on um, through long clicking on the box. So let's go and uh, create a custom command. I've already created one, but we'll go through um, the process of doing that. Tart source line. Automatically copy voice assistant capabilities. Automatically copy translation oh. results to the clipboard. Checkbox checked. This one is important. If you translate something, it'll copy it directly to the clipboard, which is always great. Voice of voice command settings. Let's go to voice command custom, settings. Custom voice create button. Share button. Play. So we have the share button. share button if you want to share them because you can technically share them with other people and other people can actually share them with you. Um, it's an amazing work, so this is how customizable it is. So let's go and create one, another one for WhatsApp. Um, I would just Play. delete this one first, if you can. Delete. Let's see. Delete. Play. OK button. Custom. Share button. Create button. So let's create one. Edit name. So it's asking me to name Cancel. it. OK. Text box editing. Um, I will name it like... Okay, I play name it message or play for instance as P well. P L Pla Y play. So it's play. Can. Can. Okay button play. Exit button. So play. 
Save button. Um, we have the save button, but we don't need to save right now. More options button. Text. More options button. We'll go through this more options. Function inserted. Um, so what happens here, it's pretty much kind of a map that you want him to do. So you tell him, like, do the, when I tell you play, when I give you this voice command, you will do this gesture and then this gesture after each other. Um, you know, along with each other. So that's how you're going to do it. Inserted. We'll first um, insert the first function. Function, top. Which is suspend browser by touching. Um, Append copy. Clean notification copy. button. Click. Long press. Advanced text. Advanced quick menu. Action menu. Main menu. Reading mode. Word by word. Word automatic browsing. Select all. Full text browse. Voice, voice assistant. Um, here you have every single like command that you could do with CSR. Voice extensions. Plugins into text recognition. Recognize the G Studio camera program set. Suspend browse by touch. This is the one that we need. Suspend browse by touch. So, play. we've inserted this one. Also, we need the click function. More options. So, we go. Function inserted. And insert another one. Function. Next item. Decrease slider. Increase slider. Go to the next one. Go to the previous con clipboard menu. Favorites. Input method. Click. Yes, this one. Play. So, now... Once we tell them like click uh, or like play, sorry, um, it's gonna do the job. Um, save let's button. save it. Saved. It's saved. Um, but first, before we try that on WhatsApp, we want to try a certain job that the voice assistant does in like the screen reader settings. So we try the suspend voice feedback thing. Let's um, to actually um, turn the voice assistant on. The gesture for it is down and then left. Um, but you can definitely map another gesture if you want. So let's do this. Suspend voice feedback. Voice feedback has been suspended. So as you can see, it actually turned that off. So we are going to get it um, back again. Voice feedback has been resumed. Cool. So now we we'll go to WhatsApp and look at how this thing works. Type a message. So text I've just sent a couple voice messages to a friend of mine. Let's see how that's gonna work. So we're gonna turn the voice assistant on. Play. Browse by touch has pause button. Hey, uh, don't pause. reply to this message. Play. We are testing something on the Chinese screen here. So as you can tell, it worked. Um, but uh, you'd need to turn the browse by touch on again so you can just um you know lock the screen and unlock um, it or you can actually press the volume keys touch browsing has been enabled and it's gonna enable the touch by browsing so that's how it works um that's how voice assistant work you could just um set up any voice command or anything and it work uh, it work pretty smoothly Thank you so much for listening, and that's been it for this week. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at contact us at blindandusers.com. And yeah, see you next week. Hope you like this one. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do actually have any questions, do feel free to reach out to me or to the whole podcast at contact us at blindandusers.com. And I hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Mariam. And the number of CSR queries we're getting on Telegram, certainly, and on the email list, I think is only, only going up. So uh, much to warrant delight. Now we turn to our app of the week. And it's a demonstration from Kareen Kivan of the ACR phone dialer app. Hi, this is Karin. I'm going to demonstrate the ACR phone, which is a dialer replacement with many nice features and customizations. When you launch the app for the first time, it will ask you to select it as the default phone app. This is mandatory. Also, it will ask you if you want to use it as the default caller ID and spam, but this is optional. When you receive a call, TalkBack will automatically announce the caller name. Unfortunately, there is no way to stop this uh, automatic announcement until now. The developer had tried to do this, but he was unable to because of TalkBack's autofocus thing. I have here to thank the developer for his cooperation regarding accessibility stuff. Every uh, issue I contacted him about 
was quickly fixed. Now, um, let's receive a call. A car phone. Elbet. I'll swipe. Home. Zero five four hundred. Incoming call. The number. Message. Answer. Reject. If the number is not in my contacts, I will be having the option to blacklist it. Answer. Reject. A so. Gain zero decibel. I can easily reach the answer and, the, uh, and reject near the bottom of the screen. At the left, I have the answer. At the right, I have the reject. In call, I have the usual stuff like end, keypad, speaker, mute, add note, and uh, I have the record. I should uh, activate the app service in accessibility, but this will not guarantee that recording will work on all devices. You should try to see if it will work on your phone. Uh, I tested recording on my Samsung Galaxy A71 and on a Huawei P30 Lite with the same results. The recording is working, both sides can be heard, but uh, the volume is a little bit low. When you are recording, the other party will not be notified that you are recording. And um, if you connect an earphone, recording will not work. Going to the app now. Re phone. Selected calls tab. At the bottom, I'm having from left to right calls. Favorites. Contacts tab. And the fourth tab will be um, recordings if call recording is enabled. I can switch between tabs by swiping to the left with two fingers. Favorites. Page two of three. And to the right with two fingers as well. Calls. Page one of three. Okay. Uh, I can uh, switch the location of the tabs from the bottom to the top in settings. Now I'm in the calls. Elbet. Rejected. When? Today. Elbet. Call. But 111.11. Outgoing. 2. 10.37 p.m. Not call. Button. Yesterday. Okay. Uh, I will call press one on call Elbet today. Elbet a car phone. Elbet zero zero nine six. Send message button. Okay, I I heard the number and send message. But if I press on any of them, nothing will happen. I should ringing screen up here. Details button. The details uh, will take me to the. Uh, to the contact details in the contacts app. Unlabeled button. This is the back. 00961 message. Here button. I have the number and any other number. If, if the contact is having more than one number, um, they, they, uh, they will be listed here. Um, I can call any of them by double tapping it. And I can also send a message. My contacts selected. Detailed. Call history. Call history. Today. 337. Call history. 337. Today. Rejected. 11. Today. Th call. Delete history. Okay. So, uh, I Details. will go back. A car phone. Elbet. Today. Uh, Elbet. I will long rejected. press. 24. On call. 111. One, this one. one. Pop up window. 111. Add contact. Note. Delete. Delete history. Blacklist. Auto dialer. 111. Okay. Um, A car phone. 100. Selected calls. Tab. Now, if I am in the contacts tab, I should note that the app is not a contacts manager, so things are limited. I will give the example the same contact that, that I was in here, um, Elbet, if I tap on its name in the Contacts tab, what will happen is the same page will be shown. The same page that I was in will be shown. But if I long press on it, I will be taken directly to the Contacts app. To the, so I will be viewing the Contacts details, but in the Contacts app. Oh, oh, now, 
Help today. More options. Search. Should I have the search and more, more options? Pop up with delete calls to show. Delete history. Auto dialer. The auto dialer is a feature that will uh, make the app call a number for you, attempt to call a number for you uh, more than one time uh, until it's connected. You can sure customize things like the number of attempts and other things. Caller ID and blocking. This is the caller ID and blocking. Let's see. Calf, caller, enabled, enable or disable services. Unlabeled so local services. Blacklist, list of numbers that should always be blocked. Checked. Android, Android, online services. Enlapse online, join our community spam database by uploading your blacklisted numbers and not checked. En enhanced caller ID. Identify unknown callers with caller name and avoid unwanted spam calls by enabling this community-based service. Not checked. Enhanced caller ID. Switch. So, uh, I have the online services and the local one. Blacklist. List of numbers that should always... A car for... Add. Button. If I want to add a number to blacklist... A car for... Blacklist. Import from contacts. Phone number. Notes. Edit. Ring silently. Reason. Drop down list. Personal reason. Match type. Drop. Pop up. Relaxed. Exact number. Re starts with. A cup. Schedule. Drop down list. Always on. Pop up win. Daily. Date range. Daily and date range. If I want to select the hours, this is not accessible. A car. Save. Button. A car phone. Blacklist. List. Checked. Blacklist. Unlabeled. Clear notification. Manual. Going Add to blacklist notification. General. White list. List of numbers that should never be blocked. General. Add to blacklist notification. Show. Clear notification. Unknown slash private number. Block unknown. Block calls when caller number is unknown or ring silently. Spoofed numbers. Block spoofed. Block calls when incoming number identified as ring silently. Show focus mode. Enable. Block all calls except from whitelisted numbers and contacts. Block contacts. Block calls from contacts too. Not checked. Show notification. Show up when blocked. Heading. Okay, I will not go into all settings. When um, blocked. Capital deck. A car phone. More options. Contacts. Tab. I will go to the dialer. I can reach the dialer using more than one way. I can put my finger on the contacts tab. right uh, b above the tabs here the tabs are on the bottom um, above them at the button. right I have the dialer also if I focus selected calls the tab. first left one and swipe left dialer button also, I can long press on the apps icon and select dialer. I can as well enable the showing of dialer when the app launches. Contacts. A dialer. Elbet. Dialer. A car phone. List. Now to type a number, I have just to put my finger on it and lift it. Asterisk. Dial. Button. To type the plus sign, I just have to uh, l put my finger a little bit longer on the zero. Now to um, use speed dial, I will use two as an example. Two A B C two dialog icon. Okay, what assign number? What I did is I put my finger on number two. I lifted my finger, then quickly I double tapped and hold, and it, it's telling me that there is no number assigned. There is no speed dial number assigned. So I can assign dial. one. Assign. Show. Three. Edit. Editing. Two. Import from contacts. Here I can assign uh, a speed dial number to others as well. Edit. Three. Going back. Keyboard hidden. A car phone. What? Selected. Now below the numbers... Uh, Sure, when, when, the, when the speed dial number is assigned, I can do the same steps, putting my finger, lifting, then double tapping and holding uh, to call the number automatically. Dial or directly, button. Actually. 
Now, more dial button. I have below the numbers more options button dial button backspace button. Activating is needing a double tapping. Now, more options. I will press button. on more options. Pop up window. Add two seconds pause. Here, I can add a number. This number will be typed after connected after after connecting and. Uh, pausing for two seconds. This will be typed automatically. Add wait. Add wait. The number that I will type here will not be inputted automatically. It will just ask me, do you want to type this number? So when I press yes, it will type it. Auto dialer. Speed dial. Okay. A car phone. I will go more options quickly button. into settings. A car today. More options. Pop up window. Calls to show. Delete his auto caller ID settings. A car phone. Setting general. Contacts. Call announcement. This feature is independent of Talkback. So if Talkback is not at automatically announcing the caller name, I can enable this feature. So it will use the TTS engine to announce the incoming caller ID. Caller ID and blocking. Call recording. Un enable, enable or disable call recording. Keep recording prompt. Automatic recording. Start. Automatically record. Recording exceptions. Recording start delay. 0%. Audio encoder. Recording quality. Recording audio gain. Large. 0%. Increase in call volume. Increase in. Turn on loudspeaker. Auto delete. Must be enabled. If older than days. 0%. Okay. Caller ID and call rec phone. Unlay phone. Enabled, enable or disable a car phone's calling screen. Dialer, show call settings. Enhanced call history. This enhanced call history means that there will be no limit on saving of call logs on the number of calls saved in the call log. Notification settings. Sound and ringtone. Advanced. About this app. Language. Back. Call reporting. Auto dialer. SIP accounts. Here I can add the SIP number um, if I'm subscribed to a VoIP service that supports SIP. Auto dialer. Call reporting. Backup. Okay, I will not go into all settings, but I advise anyone who is going to install the app to take a look at all the available settings. And um, I hope that I was able to give you a clear picture of the app. And thank you for listening. I've got to say, I quite like the ACR phone dialer. It's it's fully featured. I use it. Um, I just wish there was a way that you could have the uh, swipe up with two fingers to work on uh, apps that aren't the default phone app. But um, I uh, say so it doesn't work on my system. I'm not sure if it's meant to work. Do any of you use ACR? Well, I, I don't use it. I use what comes near, uh, natively with my phone, and that's my pixel dialer. But since it's ACR, I think it kind of almost rhymes with CSR. So how about you guys that use CSR? You know, Miriam <laughs> and <laughs> Austin. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. no, even I use the native pixel dialer yeah, and the native OnePlus dialer. That's not and fair. You should have yeah. something to go with CSR, ACR, CSR, you know? Uh, PCR. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's a nice uh, app. Uh, frankly, if you have an, uh, you know, a dialer that's not all that accessible, you probably want to give this one a try. It's one of those that I recommended uh, for our readers uh, on our email forum. Uh, if you have a dialer that's not very good, you want to try this among others like the uh, uh, contact DW contact and then the hamster beat guys uh, through phone dialer. Uh, these are probably one of the three that are most recommended. Yeah, and you can find links to those two apps in previous show notes. Um, the, the one thing I will say about ACR is that it includes a call recorder capability. Now, most apps which offer call recording dynamically disable it if call recording is illegal in your country. So if I 
download most of the call recorder apps in the UK, for instance, the call recording functionality doesn't work. ACR doesn't do that. So um, you do need to be aware of whether call recording is legal in your country, because otherwise you may find yourself inadvertently being able to do it. And I know none of you would want to. So uh, do make sure you know whether uh, call recording is legal or not before you take advantage of the ability to record, which ACR will offer you um, regardless of whether or not call recording is legal. Now we move on to our tip of the week. And Warren is going to talk to us about changing talk back granularity so that you can better spell text. Warren. This is a very important part of the podcast. We've been talking about the fact that we're going to start the tip of the week. And so we come to that part of the podcast or the episode that I'd like to talk about changing those granularities in TalkBack. It is important because, number one, you want to be able to either character by character spell something that you are not sure of the spelling. Because as we know, when you're reading things by ear, you're not getting the spelling of each and every one of those things. And so once you come across something you're not familiar with, you want to make sure that you're able to know the spelling of that, like that thing that um, Dave was talking about. I probably would know how to pronounce it after I see how it is spelled. So that's where this type of changing granularities would work. So I'm going to turn on my screen here, and I am going to focus on a subject matter here. I'm going to be focused on a message that I received from my buddy, Gary. I call him the ducky head. And so here I am. Um, Suggested reply. Cool. Gary Melconium said that is why I want to stick with Windows 10. And okay. So now I am on this message. And I want to change my granularities. If you have the TalkBack 9.1, we have two, well, actually, if you don't have a Pixel phone and all you have is some other brand, but you have TalkBack 9.1, your best bet is to scrub what I call the scrubbing. You uh, swipe up and down in one fluid movement to change the granularities. So, for instance, if I do paragraphs and I swipe up and down again, words, I am on words. I swipe up and down again, characters, do that again, speech rate, do that again, links, do that again, controls, do it one more time, headings, do it again, paragraphs, and I'm back to paragraphs. So, let's go to words. I do it again, words. All right. So, now. Uh, instead of swiping left, and this is the part that I don't like, you have to swipe down with one finger. It used to be that once you've changed your granularity, you swipe left, you know, if you're reading word by word or character by character, but you don't swipe left or right. Instead, you swipe down or up with one finger. So, Gary Malconium said that is. Y, capital I, one, two, stick. So I'm I'm reading, you know, character by character. Uh, I mean, word by word. Now, I want to read. I want to spell. See, for instance, if I want to know the spelling of the word stick, I'm going to swipe up. Stick. So it's at the beginning, and this is, by the way, this is how talkback works. When you swipe to a word and it says the word, the cursor is at the end of that word. So if you're in an edit field and you're typing something and you want to edit it, just keep in mind that when you're using word by word or line by line or word by word, for example, and you want to edit a word, when you swipe to the word, you are actually at the end of that word. So keep that in mind. The cursor is at the end. So if I do, with. Okay, see, I'm on the word with. The word with now has the cursor at the end of that word. It's not at the beginning. So if I do character, characters, and watch, if I do swipe down, space. see, there's a space. I'm not on that word with. And that's why I'm saying that when you read word by word or character by character, when it says something, the cursor is at the end of it. So I'm going to go back to words. 
Words. Okay. With. Stick. Stick. With. Okay, now with, and I have to swipe up. With. Now I go to character. Characters. W. I. T. H. See how that works? That's how that works. And so it's important. Let me try to type something here real quick. Suggested chat message. Edit box. Out of list. Showing it. Okay. I'm going to type something. Voice input. Hello, Gary Kama. What are you doing? Question mark. How come you're not participating in the podcast? Question mark. Space. I hit the space bar to stop the dictation because I didn't want to find the stop. Capital L. Okay. Deleted. Space deleted. Now I'm going to go read the message. Hello, Gary. What are you doing? How come you're not participating in the podcast? Edit box. Editing. Gary Malconium. Okay. So now I want to go to the word Gary. Okay. Question mark. So I'm on, mark. I'm on characters now. And let's switch back to. Words. Words. Podcast. The. In. Participate. Not. Your. Come. How. Doing. You. Are. What. Gary. Hello. Beginning of. Hello. Gary. So see, it's on the word Gary. Let's say I want to change that word to Jerry. Okay. And so now I switch to characters. Characters. If I think that I am on letter G, and I want to backspace or maybe go forward and then backspace and erase G, I'll be mistaken. I am at the end of the word Gary. I'm behind letter Y. So, for instance, watch if I hit delete. Delete. Why deleted? See what I mean? So, I am not at the beginning of the word Gary. So, I just messed up my Y. I have to, Gary. you know. Gary replaced R. Gary. There we go. So now I have to go to the beginning. Watch. Okay, I want to change Gary to Jerry. Maybe just J-A-R-Y. I know that's not how we spell Jerry. But let's say I want to change it to Jerry. Okay. Gary. Okay. Now I am at the beginning. Gary. Gary. Beginning of that word. So I now change my characters. Characters. And I need to swipe down. Because if I don't, I am in front of the letter G. So I swipe down. Capital G. A. R. R. So now I'm on R, but now I'm behind R. So I hit backspace. Deleted. deleted. Delete. Capital G deleted. Now I'm going to put in Jerry. Shift. Shift. Capital H. Capital J. Capital J. E. E. R. R. So I'm going to... Suggested reply. Good luck. Enlist. Hello, Jerry. What are you doing? How come you're not participating in the podcast? Edit off. So I just fixed that. So if I want to spell that, Jerry, okay, I'm in characters now. I could just do... R. E. Capital. Space. Space. Capital J. E. R. R. Y. Space. Go back to words. Words. Jerry. And if I want to just tell it to spell it, I just invoke the talkback menu. Talkback menu. Editing options. And I find spell last utterance. Copy last spoken phrase. Read from next item. Copy spell last spoken phrase. J E R R Y space. And that's how you go about changing granularities in talkback. We will be doing more of these tips and also. Um, diving deep into TalkBack so you have a better understanding of the workings of TalkBack. That is your tip of the week. Thanks, Lauren. And for completeness, I'll say two things. Um, I think this came across when Warren was demonstrating it, but whether or not TalkBack places you at the end or beginning of a word depends on which direction you're navigating. So if you're navigating uh, forward, so to your next word, uh, next line, whatever, you're going to be at the end of the word or line, whatever unit of granularity you've chosen. You've chosen. If you're moving back, uh, previous word, previous line, you're going to be at the beginning of the previous word or line. Second thing, if you are navigating by word and there is a punctuation, punctuation symbol after that word, uh, 
if you move to the end of the word by moving to next word, uh, you will not be about to delete the punctuation symbol. You'll be about to delete the last letter of that word. If you, if you want to find the punctuation symbol, uh, then you may have to move to characters, uh, move to next character and beyond that symbol. It's not, it's not going to take you to the end of the punctuation symbol when it takes you to the end of the word. That's a very good observation, and that's true, uh, Ed. I'm glad you mentioned that because, for instance, I had a question mark, you know, at the word at the end of the word podcast. So let me go there quickly and show Hello, Jerry. you what you we're doing? talking about. Show in English. Okay. Us. Use up, Jerry. What are you doing? How come you're not participating in the podcast? So see, right now it's sitting at the end of the word. Uh, podcast is in between the cursor now is in between letter T and the question mark. If I hit the backspace here or the delete key here, I am not deleting the question mark. Instead, I am deleting the T. Watch this. Delete. T deleted. You see what I mean? So let me put my T back. T. T. So in order to be able to get to if I want to erase that question mark, if I want to change that to something else, I have to change to character mode and then go to um, the question mark. So watch Hello, this. Jerry. What are characters? Now? I swipe. T, T, question mark, end of field. So it says end of field. Now, if I hit the delete key. Delete. Question mark deleted. Question mark has been deleted. And thanks, Ed, for remembering that, because if you don't, you will not be taking out the punctuation. If the last word or whatever has a punctuation, you need to uh, switch back to character and move to that end where the punctuation is. I'm not sure if this is a bug or it's by design, but it has been like this for the longest time that I know it. I think it's by design, because if that was the last word of a line and you navigated by line, you would be beyond the question mark. But obviously, that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes punctuation is going to be midline. But um, if it happens, if it so happens that you've moved to the end of the line, uh, sorry, you, you move to the next line, you're going to be at the very end of the line. So any punctuation mark, you will be deleting. I don't think I like the behavior, to be honest, the word one. Um, I'd like to move beyond the punctuation mark when I navigate by word. But Yeah, okay. it should be. But apparently it's not. And so keep that in mind when you're editing uh, those little love notes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and finally, this week, we move to our Android journey. Warren, I know you've been looking forward to this one, so I'm going to let you introduce it. Okay, this is my favorite part of the podcast, and that is the My Android Journey story. And this week's Android Journey story is brought to us by none other than the woman of the hour, just like we had the man of the hour, Dave Milke, we have the woman of the hour who is going to be telling us about her Android journey story. And that will be my friend, Rosalina Squayo. And so I want to say, Eka Avoy, la via amica italiana, Rosalina. <laughs> That's my little welcome message there. And Rosa, take it away. Hi, this is Rosa and I'm Italian. I am blind since the age of three months. My journey with the devices began in the year 2008 with Nokia. My first, first device was not accessible, but um, I was uh, just able to answer and to close the, the call um, by the, 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 the biggest button I had on my device. Um, after having Nokia uh, 11 zero, zero, I had a Nokia uh, 60 66 
point zero zero, and um, after having and and this device was uh, very accessible, uh, was the first accessible device I had. Mm, it was year two thousand and eight when I had the device with talks. I had this device from 2008 to the year 2015. So for seven years I had this device. When this device broke, I didn't know how to do. Then my brother passed me his iPhone 4S. The first week was tragic because I didn't know how to answer a call, a common call. So after learning how to answer with the first typing with two fingers on the screen, that was the beginning. I was learning to use the tapping instead of the keys. Then I used the iPhone 4S for two years, and when it broke, <laughs> my bro my brother gave me his 5S, and I was very experienced in using using these devices. That because uh, I was just uh, learning to use this kind of devising uses kind of devices uh, using the iPod with iOS 6 that was my cousin's iPod and uh, after using these devices uh, I had a problem with my iPhone 5s 2 that the battery was uh, broke and when the bar the battery of this device broke I was forced to change my phone at the first time I was uh, not sure to try the the Android devices but using Android in the time I didn't I I learned that the problem was not the Android itself, but the accessibility. They did not develop it as well. In fact, after the first device I had, which was a Alcatel 4, I thought that the Android devices were a disaster. So I was not interested anymore to have an Android device. Last year instead, I tried to give to Android devices another chance <laughs> because my cousin, which is an Android lover, told me to try because the Android application changed a lot during the, the the last couple of years. Okay, why not, I thought. So I decided to try again. And I thought about um, having a new iPhone as just if I did not... Uh, learn to use uh, the devices but finally after listen to here one month to try to learn to how to answer to a call that on Huawei device is very very complicated without the sensor I finally uh activated the answer by the sensor and
And after this, I used this for one year, from last year to the month of June of this year. And uh, I didn't like so much either the applications because the system was a little old as the last time I had Android, but it was a little better than uh, the Android 4 I had on the Alcatel 4. The problem was the accessibility mode that did not work very well. In fact, it lagged too often, and I didn't like this lagging. So, <clears throat> now I am using the Xiaomi Note 10 with Android 10. Very, very fantastic, because... That works very well, and I like Android devices because I have the chance to use applications like Telegram, which are not so accessible on Apple devices. And uh, for the Apple users, I hope that they make... Uh, a more accessible version of these applications. In this case, Android is better in this case. In fact, the, the thing I love in Android is the possibility to shell a screen reader instead of another one. Um, for example, between Talkback and CSR, which is a new screen reader coming from Talkback, more probably because that is inspired from Talkback. As uh, mm, even even if um, Talkback as has an advantage, uh, which is having the Braille keyboard as in default. Mm, instead, CSR does not have a, a default Braille keyboard, so we must um, install the uh, new um, Braille keyboard, an external Braille, Braille keyboard, like stuffed Braille keyboard or uh, advanced braille keyboard but I prefer the soft braille keyboard uh, which is um, I hope that um, the talkback developers insert the Italian braille keyboard as soon as they can because I really like using the uh, Braille keyboard to type something I did never thought about doing um, when I had the iPhone device, but I didn't. I I just didn't know that there was a Braille keyboard incorporated in the iPhone devices, um, and that is very, very beautiful in Android 4 and Android 8. Um, in this versions of TalkBack, um, there was no Braille keyboard. Instead, uh, they made um, something very beautiful inserting the Braille keyboard. <laughs> I'm very happy uh, of this, uh, the chance to use every kind of, of accessib accessibility modes and technologies. Um, 
So, um, I am not forced to use iPhone and nothing more. I like using our devices. And I noticed the difference between Huawei and Xiaomi, for example. I really didn't think I could have I could like so much this new device is Xiaomi Note 10 because uh, I didn't heard talking quite well about Xiaomi devices. Um, I heard many people um, talking uh, problems with Xiaomi, but I didn't find any problem with this device which is great in my opinion it works greatly talk back works greatly um csr works as greatly as talk back um maybe the problem was the processor of a device which i had just for gigabytes of RAM. The problem is, uh, the more big is the RAM of the device and more easier and more, uh, fluent is, uh, the, the application running on board. Okay. Um, uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to talk about my journey, which concludes, actually concludes with this device that I wish to hold as longer as possible because I'm very satisfied about this device I have. And uh, I didn't feel so dependent from the Apple devices and I wish to everyone to try all chances, all devices we can try because we must, b before believing something, we must try ourselves. So everyone um, using Xiaomi devices, for example, was talking bad of their devices mm. Mm. but mm. in my case the things are different maybe their devices are older but the other thing or they are to uh, the last gadget on, on the market but not um, not always the last generation devices, the, um, last product productions are the best. No, no, uh, I think that not always it's like this. Maybe sometimes the older version of these devices work better than the youngest uh, production of these devices. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Thank you, Rosalina. Uh, another excellent Android journey uh, contribution. We all, we all do enjoy listening to those, and, it, and it's really interesting to hear the different perspectives and the different routes via which people arrive at the operating system. Austin, how can people find us? So people can find us by many ways. They can visit our website, our all new website that is blindandroidusers.com. They can, if they have questions, email us at contact us at blindandroidusers.com. Subscribe to our mailing list by sending in an email to blindandroidusers plus subscribe at groups.io. The links to join us in for Telegram group and Follow us on Twitter and join the clubhouse. 
will be in the show notes and also follow us on our youtube channel that is youtube.com slash blind android users and we'll have a lot of extra content there like the demo of the braille tutorial that warren is going to do and if you want to build your wordpress definitely website you can go to doug's website that link will be in the show notes it is also on the partners page of our website so go there and contact him and then get started with your own wordpress website and doug's doing a fabulous job for us as you as you'll be seeing if you're following the website so do check that out that's updates it everyone this been week. going live <laughs> oh sorry doug go again updates have actually been going live while we've been recording brilliant <laughs> someone's been paying attention then uh, oh, thank you so much, Doc. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for coming on this week again. Uh, we hit another one out of the park. And Dev, thank you so much for coming up and talking about BRLTTY. And you know what? Now we're going to be sending you all kinds of requests. Uh, <laughs> Hey, yeah. anytime you can talk to me. It's any, I'm, I'm so unapproachable. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much. And thanks, everyone, for listening. That's it for this week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. And that has been another episode of the Blind Android Users Podcast. As always, we appreciate hearing from you. You send those email messages to contact us at blindandroidusers.com. For those My Android Journey stories, we encourage you to send those to myandroidjourney at blindandroidusers.com. Until we see you in our next episode, you have a wonderful day.